Hello everybody, my name is Joshua, and this is the Onshape wiring tutorial presented by Team 24180, the Blue Bananas. Now, a common misconception about wiring in Onshape is that it's difficult. It's actually not. Uh, technically speaking, the skills is pretty much just using sweeps along curves, or uh, a modified version of a sweep. So, the actual skill required to perform it technically is not advanced at all. However, what does take time is getting a feel for actually routing your wires and knowing all of the benefits and drawbacks to make in certain uh, positions and the decisions to make when it comes to the wiring of your robot. Now first, let's discuss why you should even do wiring on your robot in the first place. Wiring on robots, unlike a lot of other CAD, is actually not an exact science. While it can be, the way that the curves are formed doesn't mean that they exactly hit every single routing point. To some degree and the connections in between points usually varies when you edit just one point even if it's not one that the curve is immediately on so wires are very very difficult to get exact tolerances on like you can with all other parts in CAD. this means that your wires are not going to be an exact representation of your wires in real life but are instead going to be an approximation however this approximation is still very useful you can see here i have a lot of wires and they are phasing into each other the information I do get from this, while it's not exact, is about uh, a general length of the wire, the layouts that the wires are going to be taking through my robot, the holes that are going to be needed on my plates in order to accommodate for the wires and where I need to put grommets, what connectors are going to be used where, and just a general layout of if wires will fit or not. The curves also give an approximation of the length, so you can try and see how much money you're going to be spending in wires, how much uh, like weight it's going to add to your robot, and other statistics. But the main reason you uh, do this is that you can see if your wires in general will fit, uh, and if the routing works, and if there uh, need to be grommets in any kind of uh, way, shape, or form in certain areas like there are here. Now, the way that you can do wiring mainly is through make connectors. So whenever you're creating a new wire, what I like to do is I like to take a whole bunch of make connectors and use those uh, to route my wires. So if I, I can reveal a lot of the make connectors that I have here for some of my wires, you can see I have a ton of make connectors that are just kind of outlining the general routing of my wires. These happen to be for the odometry wires. The make connectors don't need to be everywhere. They essentially, ideally, should be at the beginning and end of each turn. You can see these are a little bit off because I edited the curve after using the make connectors as a starting point. Your make connectors are not final, but they should have a general approximation of where you want many wires to go through. Like for example, these make connectors here are being reused by lots of the same wires, which also promotes better real life practices with bundling your wires together. So the make connectors are immensely useful in that you can reuse them. But once you actually have the make connectors, uh, there's also other connectors that you need. Namely, uh, you're going to want wire connectors on the start and end ports of whatever you're plugging in. So these are all pulled from a custom library that was created by uh, Team 24180, the Blue Bananas, which is in the link of the description of this video. Uh, all of these connectors are actually designed to have make connectors on the end of the wires there and then another one that's a little bit ways out. You're going to want to select both in order because sweeps have issues resolving if there isn't a certain section of the wire that is straight before it starts curving. The straightness uh, that needs to start at the beginning of all the wires is what usually causes a lot of errors in your sweeps and why sometimes people aren't able to get a grasp on Wirecad. Once you have all your make connectors, all you're going to be doing is creating a part studio in context. Now, I'm just going to be pulling up some mine that I already have here, but usually you just create a part studio in context, and then you can create what's called a routing curve. It's down here underneath the helix category. Routing curves, which select each of the different make connectors in order, this is very important, in order, to get from your start port to your end port. Here are a couple of important things to keep in mind. First off, after you select your points, like I said, you can edit them later. So if you go to the individual points tab here, you can click on any one of the points and you can move it 
through space like this, or you can set the offsets manually here for the point that is selected. Generally, this is tedious, so you want your mate connectors to be pretty good, but often you'll need to do a little bit of editing uh, afterwards with the individual points on the wire. If there aren't enough points in your wire, you don't need to completely restart and add a new mate connector. Instead, you can go to segments and click on one of these dots. It will add a point to your line that you can now edit and move. Though this is usually not necessary if you set up your mate connectors correctly, but it's still a useful tool to keep in mind. After you've routed it, there's a couple of other issues. So uh, you'll have the curve from this, but actually converting that into wire is usually done through a sweep. Uh, the problem with the sweep is that you need a profile. Luckily, all of the wiring connectors, you can just create a sketch on the profile of the wiring connector. So for instance, I have this sketch here that just uses the circles uh, from the wiring connector that is there in my assembly when you make it in context and you can just pull those profiles and sweep those. Now you won't necessarily be able to control the rotation of the sweep along its path, so it may not perfectly align with your wire connector when you end it. Uh, for instance here, I split the wire in the middle so that it would line up with both the start and end connectors and then have the disconnect of angle uh, in the middle. But you can do it however you want, it's a personal choice. Often your wires may not line up color-wise also, which is why Another reason why this is not necessarily the most exact or refined form of a CAD. Other things to keep in mind, if you are, instead of doing like uh, odometry wires or servo wires, if you're doing motor wires specifically, or you have one, or you're doing any application where you have only one or two wires, instead of using sweep, there's actually a feature script that is also linked in the description of this video called the wiring feature script. This lets you pick any one of these curves and you can uh, automatically essentially perform a sweep, but there's a couple advantages to this. First off, if you just put in two wires here and then put in the diameter of the wires, it will just create this without you having to create a sketch profile. So it's, uh, it's a bit more like efficient and you don't have to have extra elements and features within your hierarchy here. Uh, you can also easily edit the angle for the starting and ending, uh, not necessarily ending angle, but you can edit the starting angle of this rotation very easily, just based off of that. Uh, the disadvantage uh, of this feature script and why it's not used for three or four wires or any application over two is because once you do three wires, it actually puts them in a triangle shape, not in a straight line like all of the FTC wires, which means that you have to unfortunately use sketch profiles for those. Luckily, wire connectors make those a lot easier. Once you're done with all of your parts uh, and you've colored them accordingly, you can just go into your drivetrain assembly and you can insert the wires in manually by finding the parts to do with them. If you just insert and click the check mark, they should automatically be placed in the correct spots, but not mated because of the way the parts to do in context was created. Then you can just select all those new wires and you can group them with one of the connectors that one of them is attached to so that they will not move and they are fixed in place. Uh, you can also see here, yeah, right here, I have four folders for my different wires. Uh, inside you can see all of the wires and I usually have a grouping for each of them to a connector. Uh, this lets you like kind of neaten up your hierarchy, especially since wires are gonna take up a lot of parts. Since these are four parts each individually, you can use booleans to connect these to some degree, but it doesn't always work perfectly. But yeah, that is how to CAD wires in Onshape. If you have any questions, uh, you can DM me in the unofficial FTC Discord. My username is Joshua, FTC24180, FRC10101. You can also DM me if you're interested in becoming a collaborator on the wiring connector library, as it is currently quite limited and does not have the widest range of connectors outside of common go build connectors and what's really needed. Thank you.